Welcome to my YouTube tutorial. Today, we are going to do a colorful neon dragons using our Votino nail art product. I'm Tino Vo, your favorite nail artist from Tino Vo Shop. Partnering with Dream Time Creation together, we are offering you high quality crystal and exclusive nail art product. Now, before we start our today lesson, if you are a big fan of nail art, especially nail art tutorials, you come into the right place because that's all we do. And we upload it every week. So if that in any of your interest, please hit the like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also subscribe to our Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook so you don't miss out any of our weekly upload. Now, without no further ado, let's get started. First, I apply shadow, then take out my Aurora Gel Sunset. I go in to paint it on just the tips. Then I ombre it out with my ombre brush. Hear this for 60 seconds. Now, with my white art gel, I'm gonna start sketching out my dragon. I have developed this basic pattern so you can easily follow along and recreate the design. This is my 10 millimeter brush that I use for drawing. And I use art gel to frame it just because art gel is very stable, which will prevent your lines from shifting or bleeding or blending with the other lines. Now it's time to use pigment base. When it comes to fill in color, I prefer to use gel polish because gel polish is different than art gel. It is cell level and smooth out by itself, which not a preferred choice when it comes to line work. But when it comes to fill in colors, it is perfect. And of course, I am using my coloring brush which is way different than my liner brush. This brush is built specifically for you to fill in color because of its voluminous body, which will save you a lot of time when it comes to filling. You don't have to reload your brush a lot in between the process. And of course, a coloring brush is way smoother to fill than when you're using a liner brush to fill. Look at it like a makeup foundation brush. You wouldn't want to use an eyeliner to apply makeup foundation now, wouldn't you? Okay, now when it comes to detail, I am using my 7mm brush. It is just like an eyeliner. This built specifically for fine lines. Of course, you can switch back and forth between the 7mm and the 10mm. And notice I just use the tip of my brush to paint, which will allow your line to be nice and thin. If you apply more pressure, it will get a little bit more thicker. Now I'm gonna start coloring the head of the dragon. I'm using aqua gel colors and I am gonna paint it through with the coloring brush. If you notice, I still only use the tip of my coloring brush to paint because the material that I'm using is gel polish, which is more liquidy than gel paint. So if you apply too much pressure, it might show a slight sheerness, which can be very useful for a certain technique, but not this one. This design, you want your color to be solid. If you use a coloring brush with art gel, then you can apply more pressure because art gel is more opaque and it's thicker. This is something that I want you to be extremely aware about when it comes to using brush and using gel. The pressure does matter and the gel opacity does matter also. When it comes to blending like this, you want to make sure your coloring brush is completely clean. If you have gel on it, it's gonna be very hard for you to blend it out like this. Notice that the tip of my coloring brush is a little fanned out because it don't have any gel on it. You can apply a little bit of clear top coat to make it smoother. And of course, you can use your ombre brush for a certain part of the design, especially larger part. Now, I'm gonna switch to my magenta gel colors. And do know that I cure my previous gel colors for 60 seconds in LED or UV light before I switch to another colors. That way you can safely blend your magenta gel color on top of the aqua and the aqua will stay still for you. If you don't cure it first, it's gonna be very unstable and difficult to blend. Note that when it comes to gel polish or when it comes to anything that are opaque, you don't want to flash cure it for just a few seconds because what happened is the top 
top of the surface is gonna be clear, but the bottom still gonna be wet and it gonna wrinkle up on you. So when it comes to gel polish like this, always full clear it or at least clear it for about 15 or 30 seconds. That will help a lot. Now, in another situation, if you use your brush to spread your gel extremely thin, then in that case, you can absolutely flash cure just because the layer is so thin that the surface, when it's clear, it's gonna cure all the way. You notice all this blendy part right here that I'm blending with my magenta gel color on top of the blue. You can see that it's very, very thin. That is when I can flash cure it. And if you have experience with painting, especially when you shift color in between, you must be very familiar with flash cure because what flash cure do is that it ensure your gel are solidly stable before you can switch to another color. So you don't have to babysit the previous gel color. You can feel safe enough to not worry about it and move on to another color. This right here, I'm using turquoise. This is my favorite colors, by the way. This will add a semi-aquatic feel for the dragons. I will blend over everything on the top and I will leave out the horn because the horn, I want it to be a different colors. Now these little spike right here and later on, I can outline it a little bit with art gel. And I'm still using my coloring brush and notice it is clean. Remember, you don't want any extra gel on the coloring brush at all when you blend. I'll add a little bit of turquoise gel color underneath the eyebrows also, just to highlight it a little bit. Make it pop, because later on when I do the eye, it's gonna be really dark in the eye, so I want to show as much contrast as possible. So I'm using tangerine gel colors and orange gel colors. Also splash a little bit of tangerine on the horn. And later on, we'll make it darker. And try not to blend the tangerine with the turquoise because that's not gonna be a very attractive color scheme. Now also, let's blend out the other horn, also tangerine. As you can see here, my tangerine is way lighter than the eyes because the eye, I add a little orange gel color into it. I use my brown gel color to shadow the horn and you don't wanna cover the tangerine completely, just a little bit on the side. For the eye shadow, I'm gonna use ultramarine for the shade. This will make the eyes a little bit darker, but still gonna be very rich in colors. A very important thing for you to know about when it comes to drawing, especially when it comes to shading with colors, you don't want to use black if you don't have to, because black color doesn't have color heal into it. So make sure you always think about creative dark color to use before you choose black, so your painting can be nice and rich. Now just fill it in and start blending it out. And you can switch back and forth between this coloring brush and the ombre brush. Just depend on the surface. On larger area, I prefer to use the ombre brush more. But of course, with smaller area like this, I have to switch back to my coloring brush. See how I blend on the side like that? I couldn't do that with the ombre brush. Remember to chew your brush accordingly. That will make your life a lot easier than just you a random brush to draw. I have about 18 different brush and you know, I'm still gonna have more brush. Just depend on the type of drawing and the type of technique that I wanna go after. And this ultramarine gel color will cover most of the magenta color, which is a very hard decision to make because the magenta is so pretty. But trust me, this is for the better good. When it comes to the body of the dragon, it's gonna be very colorful, so no worry there. We just want to make sure that the head of the dragon have as much shadow and shading as possible because there is a lot of texture there in the dragon face. See, when it comes to the eyes, I use my 7mm brush. And same with what I'm doing here on the horn. I'm drawing tiny little hairline along the horn. So the 7mm brush is the perfect brush for that. And of course, only use the tip of your brush because these lines are super, super thin. So if you use just a little bit more pressure, the line's gonna be thicker. So you don't want any inconsistent at all. You want it all to be nice and thin add in a little white art gel for a little highlight for the eyes. Now, I'm using Aurora Gel Snow White. This is a unique effect that I use for the dragon scale. Before, I will paint tiny little dots 
on the dragon face for its scale, but that it just takes so much time. So this Snow White Aurora Gel is perfect solution when it comes to creatures that have little scale on it. You can do the same with fishes or snake. Always use something that will save you a lot of time. And this Aurora Gel Snow White is an absolute perfect solution for that step. One of my very favorite techniques when it comes to things like this. Now I'm using shadow gel for the darkest part of the shading. This gel has 90% opacity and 10% transparency. I make it like this especially for beginner because sometimes if you use gel polish that are way too opaque, if you apply it too thick, it's gonna wrinkle up on you and most beginner can easily make this mistake. But with shadow gel, you don't have that problem. You can apply it a little thick and it will cure solidly all the way through. But of course, I'm not polishing now here. I'm using shadow gel for a different purpose. For the shading purpose. This is when shadow can live up to its name because when you stroke shadow gel very thin, it will give you this shadow effect. Extremely useful when it comes to shading. This will give you the freedom from solid application to transparent application. This is a perfect way to kill two birds with one stone when it comes to painting, especially shading. Okay, now I am going to switch to art gel. Remember, this is like an eyeliner compared to the other one, which is like a makeup foundation. I hope this is a very good example when it comes to painting. Always use art gel for fine lines. If you use gel polish for lines that are close together like this, by the time you're done, it's all gonna be blend together and you don't want that. Now notice that I use a unique color scheme using orange art gel and yellow art gel. For something that are extremely colorful, it would be a big mistake to use white as a highlight. And notice here, the tangerine colors, I use orange and white mixed together. I have about 12 colors in my art gel collection and later I will have more color. But mixing color is a very healthy habit for you to practice as an artist. It doesn't matter how many color you have in your collection. There is million of color shade in the color spectrum. Okay, so now we are doing highlight. So I am using pigment base for this step. Pigment base is very opaque even when you spread it thin. So remember when it comes to this part, you have to use the coloring brush because there is no way that you can do this with any other brush. When it completely dry, it's like a miniature ombre brush and it is the biggest blessing when it comes to small, small detail like that. It's fantastic. I'm using the 5mm brush to draw in this little highlight. And yes, you can use art gel for this line, but it's super short and super thin so I can get by with pigment base. And I love, love what I'm doing right here for the eyebrow of the dragons. I'm basically painting tiny little dots and then clean my coloring brush and then blend it out. It's like a little bone texture for the dragon. Add some more highlight down on the lower part of the mouth. Remember to use minimum amount of gel for this step. Now when I'm done with all this, I will cure for 60 seconds and then I will move on to the body of the dragon. This is not the typical way that I will paint. Usually, I will line it all out from the head to the body with black art gel like this. And then I will go in with all the colors from the head to the body. And then I will go in with all the shading from the head to the body. But you see, by doing that, it will require me to jump around from the eyes and then jump down to the body and then jump back to the horn and that would just confuse you. So that's why I choose to finish the dragon head first so it will make sense to you. And then now I am drawing the body separately. But after you understood this painting concept, you can switch it around. You can paint it all at once. No need for separation. This is a 5mm brush that I'm using to paint with black art gel. When it comes to painting tiny little scale like this, it's useful to use a small liner brush like the 5mm. It cannot take a lot of gel at all. So it will keep a minimum amount of gel on your brush and is extremely useful when it comes to fine lines like this. If you notice, I didn't really color the body first with colors and then move on to the details. 
Instead, I choose to detail first with black art gel for a specific reason. And you can see what happened right here when I paint on my gel colors. I don't paint it on too thick so it can show the scale texture from the background. And the color is no longer black, it is now like a deep blue. I'm gonna fill it in with ultramarine on the bottom. This is the darkest part of the dragon body. And still, you can see the scale poking from behind. Now, the reason why I do it this way, because the body of the dragon, just like the head, is gonna be super colorful. That means that if I were to detail the scale after I paint the color from the body, I will have to use all the different color art gel to paint the scale. I have to use a deep blue, I have to use a deep pink, a deep orange, and I don't want to do that. So that's why I choose to go over the scale first, which is one color, is black art gel. Because now, when I paint all the different color on, it will transform my black art gel into colors. When you have the courage to do something at extremely detail like this, it is helpful to think of the smarter way to work. Instead of putting so much hard work into it just for the same result. This little life-changing trick right here is something that I'm very proud of to help beginners. So your learning journey can be way easier and it can help you achieve your goal faster. Now when it comes to yellow, I do it right in the middle because yellow is very friendly. It can mix with blue, it can mix with turquoise, orange, pink. I always love to use yellow for last. And if you notice, I just leave a little white right there because I want it to be as bright as possible. And yes, I use milky gel color just to help me blend it out. After that, I'm gonna cure for 60 seconds and move on to pigment base. Now, what I'm doing here is adding the highlight for each individual scale. I already have the highlight for the entire body, but this just gonna kick it up a notch. And I know what you're thinking, this is absolutely insane to highlight each individual scale, but it's gonna be easier than you think. If you notice right here, I am just taking my coloring brush, dip in my pigment base, and just lightly touch the tip of my scale. It doesn't require any skill and it doesn't require any hard work at all. You just have to apply this motion and repeat it over and over again. And you don't necessarily have to highlight all the scale, you can skip one or two in between. It all depends on the result that you're looking for. There is a difference between a $100 nail set versus a $500 nail set. Okay, now I am gonna start adding highlight for this little scaly horn right here. And I'm still using my detail brush for this and see how I switch to white art gel and not pigment base. I always have to remember that these lines right here require art gel. So when I'm done, cure for 60 seconds and shine everything using my scratch proof shanded top coat. After this, I am gonna move on to the second nails. These gonna be the back of the dragon and it's gonna have long, long feather all across the back. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna highlight it first with art gel and later on when I'm done with all of this, I'm gonna go back and fill it with a different element. Now if you notice this line right here, these are actually not straight line or curved line. These are sway line which means it curve two different way almost like a wave and i am gonna extend it all out all the way to the bottom of the dragons when i'm done here for 60 seconds what i'm doing now is that i am using pigment base to go ahead and fill in the entire body of the dragons and of course i am switching back to my coloring brush for this step now for what I'm doing up here for this tiny little detail, you can still use a coloring brush. Just make sure that you make the head of the brush very thin so you can fit into all this small little space or you can switch back to your detail brush and drag out this pigment base. For beginner, I am recommend you to switch brush a lot more than professional nail artists. When you get used to painting like this, you don't have to follow all the rules. You can always break rules, but you have to remember that you need to know all the rules first before you can break it. I am just using a polished brush for the entire body because the space is big enough for me. Now cure for 60 seconds and we will move on to detailing. I'm using the 7mm brush still 
but when it comes to long, long feather, I might switch to the 10 mm brush. Just depend on what you're comfortable with when it comes to fine lines. The way you draw these feathers are just like the way you draw the scale, except for it don't have a round end, it have a super pointy end like feathers. Now for the position of the scale, you need to follow this pattern exactly so the result can be ideal. And then after you get used of drawing scale, you can always put your own touch into it. But as you see here, these patterns are very carefully thought out. The scale here on the top of the dragon is laid flat as you can see, but the further it go down, the further are pointing downward. This is a pretty tricky transition. That's why you need to copy this feather by feather so you can get more familiar with the transition and the feather placement before you're ready to create something of your own. So when I'm done with this long, long feather in the back, I am going in and draw tiny little scale. Now these scale are just the same as the body of the dragon it have round point at the tip. I am gonna slowly fill it in all the way to almost the entire body of the dragon. This is a 5mm brush that I'm using to draw. Now when I almost get to the bottom, what I am going to do is I am gonna fuse it with a long feather by drawing a little short feather in between the scale and the feathers. That will give me a seamless transition. Then I am gonna shade and of course I use shadow gel to shade. The trick are very easy. You just take a tiny bit of shadow gel, put it in right at the root of the feather and remember clean your brush and then you go back and blend it out. You will keep doing this repeatedly over and over until you completely shape the entire body of the dragon. But I'm just talking about the feathers. Now for the scale, it's different. You can leave the scale alone. Because on the scale, we are just gonna do the exact same technique like we do on the first finger. We're just gonna cover it with all the color and put in a little highlight for it. But these feathers are different. Because these feathers are way longer and bigger than the scale, so we're just gonna give it some extra attention. And remember that you don't want your shadow to extend all the way to the tip. You want the tip to be completely white, so it can show the different contrast between the shadow and highlight. This will help add dimension to the feathers. So you can do shadow and highlight all in the same step because the background is already really white. This is an extremely meticulous step because of the repetition. The part that are mostly time consuming is when I clean the brush because of this shading, I have to continuously clean in my brush in between so my brush can be free of gel so I can blend. And then when I get to another feather, I have to repeat that process all over. I have to put in a little gel, clean my brush, and then start to blend in it. But I'm gonna show you a little trick. If you have two of the same brush, what you can do is you can have one of the brush for just filling in colors and one of the clean brush for just blending. That way you don't have to switch back and forth in between when it comes to cleaning the brush. And when it comes to brushes, the less you clean, the better for the brushes. Because the gel that are on the brush is great conditioner for the brush as long as it doesn't free from sunlight. I only clean my brush if I absolutely have to. So I doesn't have color contamination when I use different colors. But when I'm done for the day, I always just wipe my brush and leave just a little bit of gel on my brush and close the cap because it's gonna stay overnight and it's gonna condition my brush well. If you choose to clean your brush after you're done for the day, what happens is your brush is going to be dry, it's going to be brittle overnight, over 24 hours. And therefore, the lifespan of your brush will end way quicker. Okay, now, what I am doing here is using my 7mm and my art gel. I'm adding just a little extra feather for the background. Just because when I first started to paint the silhouette, I don't really have an idea of what the body of the dragon gonna look like because it's all white. But now when I'm done, I can see the position. So yes, a little extra feather will help. And what I'm doing here right now is just basically the same thing as what I'm doing with the body of the dragon. 
I'm just filling it in with gel colors. And as you can see, the scale show up in the background. And just the way you paint it, if you are immediately taking the polish onto the surface, what happened is it's gonna cover everything and you're not gonna see any scale in the background. So make sure that you are aware of your pressure when you stroke this color on the surface. Nice and light. And for this long feather, I choose to blend it out just a little bit and leave just a little white on the tip of the feathers. This is completely optional, just depend on your taste. When I'm done using this aqua gel colors, what I'm gonna do is cure for 60 seconds in LED light and it's time to use magenta gel colors fill it in and blend it out how you're gonna position these colors is between the two blue and you're gonna go along the spine and stop about midway see that just about right here this is when you stop and just start blending everything out because you gotta save space for the other colors we're gonna have pink we're gonna have orange, yellow, green, we're gonna have a lot more colors. So remember, don't be greedy with your colors because you're gonna run out of space very soon. Give this top part right here just a light little shade of magenta, blend it in with the blue. Now this next part right here is turquoise gel color. It's very similar with the aqua, but it have more of a green tone into it. We're gonna paint it very close to the aqua and then Add a little more purple next to it. Blend it in with the blue. So you can have a colder purple tone right in the middle of the transition. Now it's time for pink. Now for the pink color, you want to paint it next to the magenta and blend it out. That way you will have more of a gradient from turquoise to blue to magenta to pink. When it comes to something colorful like this, the order of the color is very important. As you can see here, I use orange and the orange is right next to the pink. Remember, you don't want to blend orange into blue. You're gonna be sorry for that because it's gonna result in a brown color, which is very unattractive for a colorful neon dragon. After you finish with this orange gel colors, time to blend in yellow gel color. And remember what I say about yellow, it can mix with anything. Now, the colors that I'm using here, this is the shading of the dragon. And remember, I choose ultramarine because if I choose black, it's not gonna make my painting richer because black doesn't have any color heal into it. So don't forget the important use of ultramarine gel color when it comes to shadowing like this. And always clean your brush when you blend it out. This will give you a nice separation between the body and the spine. And yes, this ultramarine gel color is also very friendly when it comes to blending with other colors. It can definitely blend with warm colors and it can definitely blend with all the cool tone colors. One of my second favorite next to turquoise. Now blend out the feather and I'm gonna switch to ombre brush. I'm gonna blend the body out. We are very close to being done with this dragon, but I decide to put in just a little yellow onto this part right here just to add a nice transition between the first finger and the second fingers. Okay, do you remember this step? This is when I add in highlight for the scale. And don't forget that this step are very easy so don't be intimidated by it. All you need is a little bit of pigment base onto your coloring brush and you just basically touch in the tip of the scale. That will give it a nice highlight. And yes, it's have a lot of repetition but nothing that you can handle. There is no skill that is involved when it comes to wooden highlight on the scale like this. Just touch it a little bit at the tip and you're good to go. And I'm doing it semi slow because I'm filming this. If I were to do it on my client, I would move way faster on the scale. But I figured this is a very easy way for you to learn. The slower I go, the quicker you learn. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of magenta right into this part right here just to blend it out a little more. Make it a little more colorful. Okay, now here come the fun part. This is Aurora Gel Dream. Look at how pretty it is. I am dusting a light layer on top of the scale. Remember, don't push too much glitter, just a light touch. This will give it a nice fantasy vibe for the dragons. And it will make it a little more scaly looking, just the very same technique. 
for the face. Now when I'm done, I'm gonna do something a little different. I am gonna take a detail brush and I am gonna draw the little highlight for the feathers. It's different than when I highlight in the scale because for the scale, I just touch a little bit at the tip. But these feathers are more refined, so I would draw the actual highlight just to enhance its shape. And to me, the feather are way more beautiful than the scale. So that's why I want to give it a little more extra attention. Now, this part is a little different. There's not really any feather right here, but I'm still going to choose to do highlight in between anyway, just to tie the scale and the feather all the way together. Now, shine everything and kill for 60 seconds. And you are done. This is our finished result. And for the index and the pinky, I will include it in a different lesson. Alright everyone, that's it for today. And until next time, bye-bye.